just to turn to your neighbor and just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor. New Testament Church of God. Along with us today is Brother Chris Brown. Brother Chris Davis is helping us. I don't know why he called me Brown. And also other ministers and deacons within the audience. Today is Saturday, July the 13th. Some January. <laughs> A life of a man that is well lived. A man who was wonderful, gracious, and kind. John 14, 1 through 4, it said, Let your heart not be troubled. He believed in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And when I visited Charles a couple weeks ago, Charles was ready to go. Charles said, Sister Carol, I am tired. And I said, Charles, you don't go until God is ready. But Charles knew. He knew he was ready. So today, we go and celebrate Charles, my friend, a person who I love and I adore, a person 41 years ago tell me, cancel the lemons in Carol, we have picked you up as the bride. So Charles has been around for many, many years, and we will stand up and we will sing and we will celebrate his life. Will everyone stand? Except the family members are, are those who aren't able to stand. The song Charles chose when I spoke with him is when the road is called up yonder.
you, can you open it for me, please? We're going to go to the order of the service. We're going to have the prior by Bishop Stanley Murray. Then we have the scriptures, reading Psalms 23rd, 1 through 6, and 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 58. Those scriptures will be read by Nicole Nugent, Jesse, and Simone Nugent Emerson. Would it not? Pastor Murray. Amen. It's praying time in the house. I do know. I feel like asking you to stand for prayer, but we have to stand, sit, stand, sit. And um, my friend told me he don't he don't like to go to the Catholic Church because when he goes there, they exercise him. <laughs> he likes to go to the Baptist because the Baptist make him sit. Well. We're going to be Catholic for a moment. We're going to stand one more time in reverence to the room to pray. And I want you praying, people. The family may be seated. I want you to just pray with me as you pray for them. Knowing that they're going through a moment of sorrow and pain. And we want God to touch them and to encourage them and to lift them up. Wouldn't you want somebody to pray for you? Well, pray for them. Will we come? Let's pray for this family, the Benny. Eternal, immortal, invisible God. We come to you now. There is none like you and none to compare to you, O oh God. You are God, eternal, immortal, invisible God. You're the God who created the universe. You are the God who holds the heart into its place. You are God of the morning, the God of the noonday, and God of the night time. You are God all the time. We thank you, Father. And we come before you, God of Abraham, Jacob, and Abraham. We come to you now, Father, and we bow before you. Even in this service, is a service, God, where the family is going through the movement. They are mourning their sorrow for right now in their hearts. But we pray, God, you will lift them up. You will strengthen them. Even in this moment, God, we pray, God, that you will give them reason for celebration. You give them reason for praise. And I pray now, eternal God, even though it is difficult, they still can, oh, hallelujah, feel lifted in their spirit. We pray for them, God. We pray that everything will be said and done according to your perfect will. And everything that they have planned, it will go according. And it even go better than they have expected. So we pray that this day, God, will be a day of celebration. And when it's all said and done, God, they will be lifted up. So I bless this family. I bless everything we have done and will do in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ our Lord, and we say amen. amen. You may be seated. Get some rest now. I would like to give my condolences. I would like to give my condolences to Aunt Sharon, Mark. Anne Marie, Tony, and the rest of the family and friends. I am Nicole Nugent Jesse, niece of Charles Bennett, known to some as Skip. I will be reading Psalm 23, verses 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in a path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will bear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thy anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy 
shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Uncle Charles, we love you and will miss you, but you will never be forgotten. Rest in peace. that you can rely on and speak to, and the best part of him is you can be your true, authentic self. I know that when we go to every occasion, he was always one that would always show up. And that's what's going to hurt me the most, that when I look, I won't see my uncle. I know everyone know that he was the number one guy for every event at the party. <laughs> if he wasn't there, it wasn't a party of us. I just want to tell Uncle Sharon that I thank God that he gave you your life to have you 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 to and that he was a wonderful father, a wonderful uncle, and he would be truly missed amongst all of us and within the community. Um, I'm going to start reading Corinthians 1, chapter 15, 50 through 58. This is our final victory. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. I'm sorry. Behold, I tell you mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptibly. And we shall and we shall be changed. For this corruptible this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must pass on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass. The same that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O hags, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. As I finish, thank you guys for standing here with me, because this has been really hard. As I'm speaking and I'm reading the word, I'm trembling, because I know this is my last goodbye to my favorite uncle. This is a tough one. And I thank God that my last time with him was on Black Friday. When I went to see him on Black Friday, he told me he was tired too. And I told him, it's not over. Come on, Uncle Charles, but he was tired. But God had his way. And he's with my favorite cousin, Michael, right now. And they'd be just fine. He'd be just fine. So thank you guys for everything. Thank you. Then we have the triplets. Ricky Newgen, Erna Lawrence, Miss Janice, and on behalf of Shirley Bennett. And then we have Anne Marie is gonna talk on behalf of her father. So we'll continue the service. <laughs>
Now, as I look out in the congregation this morning, if God was to grant Uncle Charlie one more wish, and he could stand up and look out at you guys, he would say, is this for me? Because he was a loved person. And like, something I always love to say is that love is the greatest gift God has given us. And if we could love each other, not on the day of the death, but every day, what an amazing place this world would be. So to each and every one here, before I read this poem, my admonition to you is to love. Love, not just by words, but by actions. A limb has fallen from the family tree. I keep hearing a voice that says, grieve not for me. Remember the best times, the laughter, the song. The good life I lived while I was strong. Continue my heritage, I'm counting on you. Keep smiling and show the sun will shine through. My mind is at ease, my soul is at rest. Remembering all, how I truly was blessed. Continue traditions, no matter how small. Go on with your life, don't worry about falls. I miss you dearly, so keep up your chin. Until the day comes, we're together again. Trust me when I tell you, if he could recite that poem himself, he would. Be blessed, my family. Charlie is somebody that we consider to be an extrovert. 
He always has energy. He loves to interact. And Charlie's interact so much, he convinced some physician that Imam Mark was lawyer. So I just said, we had tickets to the Ravens game. And it was one of those Raven suites. We, the family, was going to the town, so Dennis always said, give Charlie the ticket. So we called Charlie. Charlie said, yeah, ma'am. I'm taking uh, Mark with me. The next... <laughs> Two days after I came back, the physician said to me, Carol, that was a good lawyer team you had. I said, who? <laughs> Charlie introduced himself as Bennett and Bennett. <laughs> Travel with the players 
go to different states. So they can see, the selectors could see the performance of these players. And Charles is always there. And I'm always there. But I get to find out where we develop the skill. And I want to share it with you. One of Jamaica top cricketers, played for Jamaica, played for the West Indies, open back. Pat Morris. Charlie told me when he was a young boy, Mark Morris selected him among some other youths to come and try to bowl him because he saw some skill that Charles had. You don't have many left arm spin bowlers. He would put a two shilling or two and six piece. Those were the sterling days. He put the coin on the bills. And anyone that bowl him get that money. Charles will bowl his butt off. <laughs> occasionally, that's true. Occasionally, he will bowl the open match for West Indies. That's him. Occasionally. And he will talk to them over here. I get him on a fool with this one. You go with a quicker one. And he say, young boy, you're good. So I learned where he developed that skill. That he Almost played for the United States in World Series. Almost. I really think he made the team, but they could not select two players from one club. Because they already selected one of our members of the Baltimore Creek Club. They played for the US in World Series in England. So that's just a part. That's just a part. We go to many states. We travel internationally too. We went to the Bahamas, play cricket. We went to Canada, Jamaica, all of them. So we get closer and closer because of sports. <coughs> but also, Charles loved music. He's an outgoing person. Everybody knows that. As my daughter said, when he goes to a party, he will make it laugh. <laughs> if it's dead, when Charles come in, once he gives you that laugh, he's going to laugh. He's the lively of the party. Because he loved music. He loved to be social. And these are some of the things I have with him. Let me give you one instead. He and I used to go as far as New York to celebrate Jamaica independence at the big ball they have every year. My wife and I, and my sister and Charles. And one day he said to me, oh man, why we can't do something like this in Baltimore? We've been traveling all the time going to New York. That's where the idea came to me. Yes, I'll try and see if we can do that. So I was president of the Baltimore Critical and Social Club at that time. And I raised the question, why can't we do an independence hall? And it was unanimous. However, I, was, I came under attack by one person. Mr. President, you said, Ball, women do a long frock. I said, look. We can't tell people to dress because we will ask them to dress properly. This is a ball. He said, Mr. President, you're trying to put your camera, you can't reach it. That's okay. And that's how we started. Charles had an input. That's how the Jamaica Independence Dollar started many years ago. Many years ago. So he's that type of person. He's that type of person. And I can't tell you that sport. He and I played on the same cricket team. He and I played soccer. He was a member of the Santos, not Santos, Nascimento soccer team. And I recall one day he said to me, Rick, you know that Pele coming to Baltimore? I said, no, you're joking. You mean the Pearl Pele from Brazil? He said, yes, Santos found out. You sure? Yes, sir. Pele coming. 33rd Street Stadium to play against the base, Baltimore first professional team. He said, well, we get that ticket. He said, oh, we're going to get that. He's expensive, but we're going to see what we can do. Thanks to Mr. Winston Herb, good coach of John Hopkins, Jamaica. Charlie went to him and said, look, my block, that's what he called the Can you get us some tickets? He said, it's what he can do. And Charlie got the two tickets I got for him. And he went. And we saw the game. He said, you know why I really want to go? Because I've never seen Pelopelli in person. And that's all he was. He got me a ticket. 
to which you have. There are many things I can talk about. And Charlie, as far as the Caribbean community, many things that we have achieved. Because the time, I can't touch everything. You know, as I said before, it's not with us. But I must tell you, we love music. We started promoting reggae music. It was Charlie and I that started to promote reggae music. So, if I was the first DJ, he was with me. Yes, I was, everybody know, in the Detroit community. We went to the country clubs, that's where we took it. Wakefield Country Club. Um, car, Beach Club in Annapolis, all over Baltimore, all the union office. Charlie was there because he loved music. If anybody don't love music, he's dead. <laughs> My friends, I'm going to miss him so much. We were everywhere, and there's much to say about him. He was a giver, always helping. When there's char charitable events, he would be there. Even when he was sick, I told him that the Caribbean Carnival Association, uh, the group affiliated, is having a fundraiser. He said, come and get me, and he would walk with his stick to go there. My friends, there's much more I'd like to say, but in a nutshell, Sean was a great guy. Yes. He was a great person. You just have to know him. And so, we all are going to miss him. Now, it would be remiss for me not to say what I'm allowed to say. As you all know, I'm mostly the president of the Jamaican Association. I mean, I look around and I see a lot of members here. Of course, on behalf of the organization, I would like to say well, condolences to the family and friends who took time to come out and show you last respect. Thank you for coming.